Uh, this is Ian, who's going to talk to us about five new social commerce trends for retailers. Ian Crocombe from Deft. Thank Double you. hands and away you go. Thank you very much, Alex. Lovely to see you all. Everyone there? Yes? Thank Woo! you. Um, I've got no clicker, but that's going to be better, Alex. Isn't right. It, right. You know? Hey, right. I'll get the... You, you do jokes. Clicker, I'll, I'll get the clicker. A little bit. Hang yeah. on. Um, it's obviously... One minute. I'm being told that the... One, that's What's fine. wonderful about the tech team today is they're just challenging our presenters in many I different thought, ways. I thought Dan and Michael, the tech team, are brilliant. Here comes the clicker. Thank Applause so for the much. clicker, please. Woo. And away we go. Okay, everyone, 10 minutes. It's so nice to see you all. 10 minutes' time, it's going to be lunch. You can get beers, you can get martinis, whatever else you want out there as well. Um, I'm Ian Crokin from Deft. I'm here to talk to you about five trends uh, and the art of science of social commerce. So we've just done a lovely trend report, which is coming out at the end of the month, and I'm going to share with you five sneak peeks from it today. Yeah. So probably the only time you'll ever see this, maybe get your cameras ready, zoom lenses, all that kind of stuff. Awesome. So, Ogury had Shakespeare, I've got Leonardo da Vinci. Is there a theme, Alex, do you think, in these slides? High class. Good stuff. That's good. That's good. Um, so, Leonardo da Vinci, born in 1452, um, an absolute polymath of the Renaissance. Not only did he paint the Mona Lisa, but he also invented flying machines, vehicles, weapons of war, uh, biology. He looked at geology, geography. He was the true Renaissance person. Amazing. Um, but the thing that he managed to do was he combined art and science together. Um, so, when I was at Facebook, I spent five years there working with Nira, my co-founder, and one of the things that we saw was modern da Vinci's walking amongst us today, combining art and science together, and they might have been CMOs, they might have been brilliant leaders like yourself, you know, um, or creative directors or entrepreneurs, but these people combined art and science together. And over 10,000 campaigns from the biggest brands in the world to the smallest startups, um, we learned some incredible things. And we've taken that blueprint of what we've learned and we've rolled it into DEFT, our creative consultancy for social commerce. Uh, and, uh, and we launched last year with Niran over here. And we're already working with tons of great D2C brands and some other big brands as well. Um, so what we've taken is we've taken what we've learned and we've rolled it into a blueprint which can show you whether you're leading in terms of growth, whether you're a laggard or whether you're a little bit too much on the art side or a little bit too much on the science side. Yeah? So I'm going to take you through some of the things that we've learned. Um, we've got this report coming out uh, at the end of July. It was going to be the 20th, but we're getting pretty busy now, so hopefully by the end of July. If you register on our Deft website, you can get uh, a free copy of the highlights of it as well. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you what we've learned today. A lot of the brands we've run through are a combination of high street, so we've got people like Next and DFS in there. Um, and heels, and they're also some of the kind of upcoming brands, people like Snug, Maid, uh, and Loaf as well. Um, there's five things I'm going to talk to you about today, five highlights. Um, the first one's TikTok. The next one's about creators, how people are using those, um, how commerce experiences are moving to mobile, how trust works, and lastly, about what we can learn from China. Okay, so starting with TikTok. Um, Dan, can you make sure there's no audio on this, because I've got some awful soundtracks on it all. You know, really embarrassing ones. Great. Okay. So, so TikTok, hands up. Who uses TikTok here? Ian Edwards. Yeah, hand up. Come on, Ian. Sorry. Good. Okay, cool. So, so listen, TikTok is growing incredibly quickly. It's the second most downloaded app at the App Store at the moment. There's 19 million users in the UK. Two thirds of them are women and 45% of them are over 25. So it's not just kids on there at the moment. Um, so it's a super interesting place. Most of the brands on this social commerce wave were not present on TikTok. And there's a good reason for that. The ad products don't work very well at the moment. Yeah, so there's no direct response or e-commerce products, but they're coming out. Over the next couple of months, they're going to be releasing uh, catalog-based advertising and also collections as well. Um, but what we think is really interesting is that your audiences are on TikTok at the moment. So this is a good example for Dunelm, who are actually pretty good at social commerce. Um, and these are some of the trends that we're seeing on TikTok at the moment. This is the eight pound Dunelm mirror trend. So basically for eight quid, you can buy one of these mirror panels um, and people are stitching them together and putting them in their hallways to make their houses look bigger. Total genius trend. And there are hundreds of posts about these on TikTok at the moment. And Dunelm is not part of that story. Yeah? So, I mean, this happens to all of us. There's more new channels growing up than we can deal with. Um, but if you're thinking about TikTok and thinking about your audiences, go and have a little look about what consumers are doing with your brand at the moment, because they're doing some really, really interesting things. Um, and it's a really good time to start building the muscle to get into the channel. And as the ad products come up, you'll be building signal for that as well. So build TikTok now. Go and get in there. Go and get involved. Um, 
The next thing that we saw in the wave of research is creators. So we can call them celebrities. If you've got someone from Love Island, um, they might be like a digital influencer. Normally, it's a portfolio of those. I think Next is really good to look at. Next have got a really good different set of creators from big to small. They use them in different ways. Um, some of the things we saw from people who were doing it really, really well, and Made is a great example, because they have a really broad portfolio of creators. So Made, for example, are working with artists like Natasha Birds. They'll work with, uh, obviously, interior designers, but lots of different people who are sort of tangent and on the edge of their core topic. Some of the more traditional brands just work with interior designers and stylists. So if you want to get more growth and find new audiences, you want to borrow the interests of these other creators and be really expansive about the people that you work with and have a broad portfolio. Um, and think about the future, think about your next audience, not the last one. Okay, so good creator programs grow new audiences and the subtitle should be don't leave it to the intern. So we see a lot of creator programs being managed by quite junior teams. The next one, build a mobile commerce experience with product catalog. So um, Byron Sharp talks about uh, mental availability being really, really important to grow your brand. So remembering the brand, having those memory structures, and physical availability. When he wrote the book, he probably thought about M&Ms when you went to your local store and being able to pick them up and having them on the shelf by the uh, checkout. But actually on the internet now, it means taking your e-commerce store and putting it where your audiences are. And a classic way that you can do this is with catalog-based ads. Here are the ugliest ads in the world ever from DFS. But it's literally, it's their product catalog. And they've just kind of squirted it onto the internet here. Um, and we know we can do tons of stuff putting creative treatments over these. Um, so getting your product catalog into places where people live. Um, and then also, this is some good examples from Instagram as well. So taking your product catalog and then making them into shoppable shops. I think there's a pilot at the moment where you'll actually be able to buy these on Instagram as well. I think there's 10 brands on that at the minute in the UK. So, so make sure your product catalog isn't trapped on your website. Get it out to where people are and let them buy from it. Okay, two more to go. Good stuff. So amplifying trust through reviews. Who here knows what their trust pilot review is for their brand or for your favorite client? Anyone? Was that me at the back? No? A lot of D2C brands and a lot of startups live by these reviews. And if you think about it, it makes sense because what you really want is this kind of gun-shaped review here with like a bunch of ones and then a few kind of like twos and threes for kind of credibility. And what you don't want is this kind of deflated swimming pool kind of thing, which is a bit, sort of a bit of a mess, but lots of really, really bad reviews as well. So, so for a lot of the startups and scale-ups, no one had heard of their brand. You hadn't walked past kind of Eve or Maid or Snug Sofas on the high street, so you had to really invest in reviews, and those brands have done that really, really well. And I think for a lot of traditional brands, they didn't feel they had to. So who can guess who's the top of this uh, Trustpilot review for these retailers here? Any ideas? Audience participation? No, 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 not enough drinks yet, okay. Thanks. How about the worst ones? Who could be some of the worst ones down here? No, I, I'll, I'll imagine that you're telling me. I'll imagine that you're telling me. Well, what's quite nice is actually that a couple of these quite traditional performance brands are doing really, really well with their reviews. So you would expect people like Snug, who we work with, even made to be good, because they, they, they really manage their reviews. They get response to negative feedback very quickly. But what I loved was that these sort of traditional performance marketers like Dreams and DFS, who would have spent lots of money on TV and really understand their sales funnel, like they understand the power of the review um, when they're selling to people. And actually on the bad list, um, I was quite surprised that Next were down there. Like Next are generally doing brilliantly. They got lots of investment from their board a couple of years ago, and they've grown incredibly on their kind of social commerce. This is the one area they're probably a little bit weak on. Um, Amazon, I love that, because really, Who's going to review Amazon, you know? Um, they've got their own reviews anyway. And B&Q as well, who do amazing brand work and really great comms, but seem to not be able to follow that through into e-commerce as well. So, so have a think about reviews. Reviews are a way that you syndicate trust to other people. And I think increasingly, as Snug are going to be competing with B&Q or whatever, as you're competing against different types of companies, you need to be really on top of this. OK, last one then. Um, looking to China. So, so we see lots and lots of brands at the moment uh, looking to China to get inspiration. Um, the Chinese social commerce market is incredibly sophisticated. Um, I think the value of it is 10 times the US today. 
Um, and, the, uh, and it's really a combination of working with key influencers, so these key opinion leaders, KOLs, having live commerce, having gamification, and having the ability to purchase within, these, within the platforms as well. Now, we don't have those platforms at the moment in the UK. We don't have things like PDD, um, but we do have lots of platforms like Instagram and Facebook and TikTok where you can kind of fake that experience. Um, so what we're seeing a lot of really progressive brands doing is um, trying out a little bit of this, Dan, you might need to click now to get this video to run. Look at that, like a dream, thank you. And sound off as well? Cool, thank you. So basically what we're seeing lots of brands doing is trying to fake that experience, because you can't buy directly from Instagram in the UK at the moment. Um, people are doing this. This is an example from Snug, uh, and this is something that we did with them. So we ran a one hour live ex Instagram experience with the wonderful Troy the Magician and Stuart from Breathworks as well, to build hype about the launch of a new sofa. Um, we got 10,000 registrations for people, so that's 10,000 new leads for sort of two and a half grand sofas for Snug. Very big engagement and their biggest ever traffic and sales day off the back of it. So these things are quite hard to link together. The platforms don't work. But if you can build the muscles today and start to learn how you can engage your audiences, then you'll be really well set when things like Instagram product catalogs available and straight through purchasing as well. Amazing. So we are nearly there now. Um, in summary, um, the art and science of social commerce, you've got to be able to mix art together and science. You need your technical prowess, your platforms to get scale, but you need to have intuition, creativity, and great ideas to get through to people. Um, we've got this report coming out later on in July. If you go to our website, you can register for a copy of it. I'd be very happy to talk any of you through it. Um, these are the kind of key action points that we've seen up of this first wave. Um, make sure you're understanding what's going on in TikTok and you've got a plan to invest in it at least. Uh, make sure your creative program is not being managed by the intern and it's a strategic thing that you're doing. Uh, make sure your mobile commerce experience is using catalog. Um, we know that on Shopify, for example, 80% of all visits to all Shopify sites are on mobile and 70% of all purchases are on mobile as well. So you need to make sure that you're fully mobile optimized on commerce. Um, understand what's going on with reviews and take control of them if you don't have control. And lastly, look to China to inspire your playbook. Um, Fantastic, Wilson, thanks so much for your attention. I hope you're enjoying MAD. Now it's straight to lunch. Alex, is it back on at two? It is. Amazing First of all, stuff. let's have a massive round of applause for Incredible Ian and Def. Very deftly done. Thank you very much, Alex. Well That's done. why we named it.